This is Neil Son Dynasty. I am Neil, lead reporter for Neil Son Dynasty. Ha! <laughs> Anyhow, uh, coming to you again live from Vallejo. Looks like uh, there's a chink in the Chinese armor. A chink in the Chinese armor. Uh, looks like they are uh, quivering on their energy policies and stiff line towards Australia. And are now looking at taking Australian coal again. If this new Australian government doesn't give in too easy, they might be able to use it as a negotiation, as you will hear the reporter talk about. They might be able to, if they hold the strong line and keep their national sovereignty in the negotiations, they might be able to loosen up restrictions in China, which could... There's a chance. There's a chance it could change everything. You know, it might be the catalyst, the one tipping point that turns this... BS around and keeps us from going into uh, the heckish place that we're heading to uh, if things keep going the same way as they're going. Here's the report. One day I'll have better cameras and set up better and I'll be able to come to you proper, but here it is. Just for shits and grins. <laughs> Cut to. By Beijing's willingness to mend the relationship with Australia is being driven by some internal pressure on energy supplies, as I mentioned at the start of the program. Now, no doubt government ministers have put in a lot of work touring the relationship, but I don't think they can take the entire credit. Overnight, there was a surge in investment in ASX-listed coal producers. As expectations grew, the Chinese authorities will lift the unofficial ban on Australia's coal exports. Of course, given the fact China is suffering from high commodity prices, due to an absence of competition from Australian mines and another surge in COVID infections, which has sapped domestic spending and confidence, one can't help but think this is a thawing of convenience. The why, though, is not at all that important. Joining me now to discuss this is Nationals MP David Littlepratt. David, thank you very much for your time. What are you hearing both abroad and on the ground here about the possibility Beijing, that China will take back our coal? Well, look, this is a positive uh, movement from the Chinese government. Uh, they obviously are in a predicament where they have to accept it, but what this is a real lesson to the Australian people is you don't become bullied. You stand up to bullies. You hold the values and principles of your nation, uh, the values and principles that over 100,000 Australians have lost their lives defending. And when you do that, invariably uh, the world will look at you and they'll look properly on you as a good global citizen and, they, and those that want to bully you will be stood down and they've now realised that they have nowhere else to go but to come back to, to the source of, of much of their energy and much of their clean energy coming from the cleanest coal source in the world right here in Australia. Uh, and so we've always said that we're prepared to have dialogue, to have that conversation, but they won't be uh, predicated on conditions and you don't put conditions on another foreign country. We've made that clear and we hope that this government continues on with those values and principles, but we stood... Yeah, I hope you got that. He hopes that the current Australian government sticks to the same principles that his government stuck to. So there's a chance that the current Australian administration could buckle at the knees, cower down, and we could continue letting China think that they are world power but I have a feeling that things are going to change and hopefully I pray that the new Australian government will keep the cojones hanging low. Good up to China. We made that clear. Uh, and I think that uh, that's a, a very strong lesson that the Australian people should take, that if you compromise on those values and principles, your nation will be weaker for it. But invariably, uh, it will get to a juncture where bullies have to stand down and have to re-enter re the global community the way they should and act. You heard that. Australia kind of stood up to the bully. I mean, he just explained it to you. Hopefully he's right. The way they should with other good global citizens. So does it really matter why they, they might take back our coal, even if it is for the convenience of keeping their people warm for the first time in two years? This is about the restoration of our exports, which is too important just to pass over. Oh, exactly. And look, we've always made it clear we're, we're prepared to trade with them, but not on, not on their conditions, but on the conditions of foreign, uh, on good international law. Uh, we, we abide by the international law of trade and, and won't be coerced by anybody. In fact, the fact that they now want to take it is obviously circumstantial. 
for the facts that they're, ch they're having challenges in their own country. And that's fine, and, and we accept that. But uh, you know, the reality is, is that this is a strong lesson not to compromise on those values. Principles. <clears throat> that's why Australia is a strong country. That's why Australia is a great country. And the, how they re-enter that market will be about them and culturally, about how they save face, and that's fine. We're happy to do that, but we will continue to have that dialogue. We encourage the government to continue to have dialogue with them because that is the best way to resolve differences, but not compromising values or principles or our democracy or sovereignty is not. It would be an incredible shot in the arm for the mining industry for coal to be exported again to China. Do you... Anyhow, that's, it's relevant, but not relevant to the point that uh, it's quite possible that Australia's move, as bold as it was, a long time ago, you know, 200,000 years ago when they denied China the coal for some reason, I don't recall right now off the top of my head. Uh, I liked it at the time and I like where they're going now. It seems like they could, uh, you know, CCP is a weird, weird government. Uh, hope, hopefully things will change and we won't go into a world depression. They'll be able to kick the can down the road for a little bit and everyone will, who's woke up to what's going on we'll be able to wake up some more people and we'll be able to get more prepared to where we won't be totally screwed i don't know man dominoes have already started to fall we we i mean i um, i said one time i have a crystal ball i damn sure don't have a crystal ball no one does there's maybe five people in this world know what the heck's going on and i am not one of them but anyhow you guys have a great day i hope this enlightened you on the you know, knowledge for investment opportunity, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's all about making money, right? But as the Australian said, it's about making money and not compromising your principles. You guys have a good morning, and I'll come to you probably in another 10 minutes.